So this journey began the same way that all great journeys do, with a little bit of good old fashioned character customization. I hopped right into general info and started cutting weight until I was 66 kilos and in the featherweight division. I left my height at the maximum of 180 centimeters so I could slap around the little men in the division with ease and change my first name to agent, my second name to 47 and my nickname to assassin. I then set my social media handle to real hitman, you know, to differentiate me from all those fake hitmen on social media. And I selected Penrith Australia, pronounced Penrith Bra by the locals as my hometown. I then set my age to 18 so that I'd have a nice, long, illustrious career ahead of me getting paid millions to inflict permanent brain damage on my opponents in the octagon on live television. I made myself a Southpaw because I'm a Southpaw in real life, decided I wanted to fight like someone who was perpetually having an epileptic fit, and chose this as my walkout song. No idea what it sounds like because I turned music off, but I'm pretty sure it sounded exactly like this. After that, I flicked through the already made character presets to find the perfect canvas that would bring my artistic vision to life. I finally settled on this one, because he's obviously goat material. I shaved off my beard immediately, only to realize that I was actually Chevy Chase. And to compensate for how atrociously ugly I was, I gave myself a classy gentleman's haircut. All business in the front, but party in the back. Next, I had to choose a head. And whilst every fiber of my being was telling me to choose either of these three, I finally settled on this one. And now it was time. Time for me to sculpt my Michelangelo J- <laughs> Gosh. My Michelangelo's David of the 20 whatever century. This <laughs> is what I ended up with. I gave myself a couple of beautiful bright blue eyes, resisted the temptation to go with this, and instead went with this, and selected the pastiest skin color that the game had to offer. Then, as per protocol, I went and removed all of the stupid default tattoos that the game selected for me, and replaced them with some even worse tattoos, but this time, they were made by me. Contact free payments only, ladies. After that, I slapped a barcode on the back of my head for a jumbo-sized tube of hemorrhoid cream, and put on my slick, custom-made killing suit. Smooth. Next, I decided to represent Australia by stuffing an Aussie mouth guard in me mouth. Australia, get it up ya. And finally gave myself an outfit fit for a superhero. Now, my journey to the top wasn't always a glamorous one. Matter of fact, it started under a bridge somewhere in Southeast Asia in an illegal fight to the death organized by Shao Kahn and M. Bison. The tournament was also rigged, meaning that I literally couldn't win it. Although I was pretty sure for a while there, I was whooping the other guy's ass pretty bad. But then I got folded like a lawn chair. After that, I decided that it was probably time to take my job seriously. So I headed into the local gym to beat up the owner. Unfortunately for me though, he bamboozled me by asking why I was wearing a shirt on top of my suit and I ended up joining his gym and becoming a member instead. Then, after a very intense 45-minute training session together, we headed back out to M. Bison's secret island for another four top-secret under-the-bridge hobo death matches. Needless to say, they didn't end well for the other blokes. Fortunately though, it seemed like Dana White had a bit of a thing for illegal blood sport death matches, and he happened to be there looking for new talent to join the UFC. And seeing as how I whooped so much ass in my four illegal amateur cage match fights, I didn't even get a choice to join the Women's Fighting Association like I usually do, and I went straight to Uncle Dana's Contender Series. Also, I decided to play the game on Legendary Difficulty, because I've always been a strong believer in the character building properties of self-inflicted pain and suffering. I also like to cry a lot. I signed a one-fight deal because everyone already knew that I was going straight to the UFC after detaching a man from his soul on national television, and then I went and separated a man from his soul on national television. Now at this point, seeing as I was actually in the UFC itself, Uncle Dana wanted me to crush a few cans to prove that I was worth the investment. I had to smash this guy, this guy, and this guy. This was their stories. After that, I paid some dude with a sick afro 67,500 US dollars to teach me how to do a couple of spinny kicky things. I then used those spinny kicky things to kick the crap out of the same dude that taught them to me. This is how that went down. Hey Dana, look at my floppy arms. Anyway, at this point, I was now ranked 14th in the featherweight division with five wins under my belt and zero losses. Still, in order to get any named opponents that actually mattered, I knew I'd need to crack a few more skulls. One of those skulls was in this bloke's noggin. Unfortunately though, Uncle Dana played his ha ha sucked in card and informed me that despite my six week training camp geared towards my scheduled opponent, which is complete bollocks because I never prep for anyone, he pulled out and I now had a new one. The fight started with me getting every single tooth in my mouth knocked out, which then naturally sent me into Hulk bash, Hulk smash, Hulk take all your cash mode. 
Here's a nice montage of me laying on top of him and slapping him in the face repeatedly until the ref finally calls the fight. Ain't nothing but a G thing, baby. I'm into octagon acting crazy. Unfortunately, I have narcolepsy. Watch me wriggle on the floor like a worm drinking Pepsi. With that guy out of the way, I went back to UFC HQ and demanded a fight with the dude that pulled out due to an alleged injury and then gave him a real one. Instead of embarrassing him by showing you the actual fight though, I'll just leave these fight highlights here for you instead. Professionally curated by ESPN. Anyway, after that I had to end the career of pretty boy Brian Ortega, who was actually really really good at impersonating an injured turtle. But despite my gut instinct to help the injured turtle, I stayed on my feet and kicked him in the ass instead. Then I kicked him in the mouth and put him straight back down again permanently. Now I needed to smash the bog out of Walmart 47 and fellow Australian Alex Volkanovsky, which I obviously did in glorious style. Sorry Alex. And with that out of the way, it was finally time for me to punch on with the featherweight champion and the only American president that ever made it into heaven, Abraham Lincoln. Before the fight though, my coach came into the back room to give me a pep talk where he said things like, the day you walked into my gym was the worst day of my life, your head is really, really weird and not like the other kids, and pointed out that I was wearing a shirt on top of a shirt and that I was an idiot. We then bumped fists and headed out to get to work. I started the fight like a true gentleman and immediately found myself in a leg lock that nearly cost me the fight. Fortunately, the bell saved me, but I was just warming up anyway. If I'm being honest though, I was pretty mad after that, so I gave him one of these ones, but he got back up and tried to do some Matrix crap, so I pimp slapped him in the mouth and knocked him back down again. And just like that, the featherweight strap was mine. Hurry up and put the belt on me, Uncle Dana, you bald <laughs> Anyway, at this point, all that was left for me was to move up a division and become a two-division champ, beat up Khabib and Connor, and finally get recognized as the greatest fighter that ever lived. While I waited for Uncle Dana to organize my super fight, though, I made the most of my time by beating the skid marks off Max Holloway, Frankie Edgar, Hinato Moicano, Korean Zombie, and even Calvin Catter, just for good measure. But fortunately, when I got back to the portable toilet under the bridge that I call home, I got the text message I'd been waiting for. It was now time to move up to lightweight and clean house. And also my bum, because I, I live in a public toilet and I just pooped. Unfortunately for me though, it looked like the belt was being held by Khabib with a 33-1 win streak on his record. Also, if you've ever played UFC 4 before, you'll be aware of the fact that this dude will take you to the ground and keep you there until he either smashes your face through the canvas or you tap out. As per usual though, before the fight, my coach came into the back room to give me a bit of a pep talk where he said stuff like, if you were my son, I would have left you at a McDonald's car park and never come back for you. I hope you lose and that I should consider posting an ad on realestate.com to rent out all the empty space on my forehead. Anyway, as expected, it didn't take long for Khabib to get me on the ground, but fortunately I'd rubbed on several tubs of Vaseline in the locker room before the fight. So I slipped out of his grip and got back to my feet ready to dole out the pain. Unfortunately though, he crash tackled me straight back down to the ground again. So I reached up and grabbed his head, then did the roly poly to find myself on top and... Nope. Now please enjoy this brief montage of me slowly coming down with late stage dementia. Oh, and this is the part of the fight where I remembered that I know Kung Fu and where I might have given him just a, a little bit of his own medicine. You know, just so he could taste it and he knows what it tastes like and yeah, he did. And just like that, without even breaking a sweat, I became the UFC champion. But this time of a completely different division at the same time. I'm so good. But my journey wasn't over yet. You see, I'd moved up to lightweight permanently, but I wanted to be recognized as the greatest of all time. And what better way to do that than to beat the living poopy McPoopies out of Conor McGregor. Unfortunately though, it wasn't his night at all. Sorry, Conor McGregor. And just like that, not only was I a double division champ, but I was also recognized as the greatest of all time. Get goated.